Okay, guys, I'm going to show you how to work with the new tower system. We're going to build just a simple sort of, uh, you know, castle wall. We've got a, a basic starter of a scene here. We're going to go into the towns module, maps, wilderness, terrains, and then grass and dirt terrains. And we're just going to grab a generic uh, grass terrain here. Let's grab this one. We'll allow vision and save changes. Okay, so this is the starting scene. We're going to go ahead and start dropping in some assets here. I'm going to start with just some pre-built towers. Oops, I'm going to my prefab library. I've got my towers here. These are my pre-built ones. And I think that I want to have one of my towers be a clock tower. Oh, before I do that, I'm going to create some levels here. These presets are in the levels macros if you ever need them. What happened is I just clicked on that and if I open this up, whoops, let me try that again. There we go. Now I've got my levels created. I'm gonna turn that back off and then I'm gonna drag these in because these are already created with levels in mind. So if I turn levels on, it'll force them all into um, whatever level I have active, and I don't want to do that. So here um, I've got a, a, a bell tower. And that should be good. The bell tower has an arrow, uh, has arrow slits in it as well, so it can also be used for defense. And then I want a maybe a larger square tower. Be for defense purposes. Notice I'm just having my egress points kind of point in generally. So I'll probably change these around a little bit. Just gives you an idea of the dimensions of the castle that I'm building so far. And we'll put one more sort of general arrow tower over here. I'm going to bring these in closer to each other. I'm not going to try to make a big map here. Of course, all these towers could have been the same if you want uniformity. And again, just to show you our dimensions. This is this is essentially how we've got this laid out so far. Now, what I think I want to do is I want to change my bases a little bit. This base here, I'm going to change into something more like sort of a traditional sort of stone tower base. And I'm going to do the same thing with all of these. And then I need some kind of way to get into my castle. So I'm going to grab tower piece this time. I'm going to use a complex tower piece. Which is up here. And I want uh, a straight piece. So I want doors on both sides. So let's see. How many squares do I have here? I'm going to change my opacity so I can see my squares a little bit better. This is important just to make sure your, your towers are all sitting and your egresses are all sitting in the right spot. So I got one, two, three, four, five. So I think I can get away with a five by five straight piece. I'll show you what I'll do here in a second. I want a larger door. Than the one that comes bundled with it. 
So go to my foregrounds and click open my doors. And I've got this um, larger door here. And just while I'm here, I want to edit this just so my door's got a bigger egress. So go out to there. And I'm going to give this a fancy sound. So when it closes, Towns module and my sounds, I've got a, got a, a gate close. And then I've got the same thing for open. I'm using the ambient doors module here, if you guys haven't seen this. If you've enabled it, this will automatically work. And I can, um, it makes a nice, satisfying noise. And a closed noise also. Of course, there wouldn't be any these in here, so I'm just going to delete these tiles. Now this is sort of my main entrance to my castle. I want to grab this path, just a quicker way to navigate my, my, my paths here. And I'm going to just drop in, change this to 150, and I'm going to drop in this entrance. We're going to make it even a little bit smaller. I'm going to hold down shift so I can put it exactly where I want it. That gives me a nice entrance. Now what I want to do is build walls around, and then I'll work on my egresses. So if I go into my towers, uh, I have ramparts and that's where I have these different sized walls and I can even have them uh, you know, run corners and, and things like that. So let's drop one of these in at 150 DPI and we'll see in a second if that wall is long enough. Drop another one in here. This one's probably not going to be long enough, so I'll end up using an extension. And I'll just drop some short ones in here. I'm dropping these in as uh, background tiles, by the way, if you didn't notice. And we'll work on making sure that they're in the right spot. But you see they're, um, they're above the bases, which is what I want. I want the, you know, the tiles themselves, the walls, to be standing above the base. And maybe I even want this to go up. So my staircase can even drop in here. And this is just to give you just more tactical variation. All right, so all of a sudden I'm, I'm going up, which means I can make my, my walls a little bit taller towards the back. Of course, you have to have the same elevation change there. So essentially this, you know, these may be 10 foot walls and they'll get to maybe, you know, 20 foot walls. And this back wall will be a 20 foot wall. Okay, so now let's start looking at our towers and see where they line up and where we have to make adjustments. So I can see my ground floor here. First of all, you know, one of the things I, I know I have to solve for immediately is uh, I need an egress. So I'm going to change this just a little bit and I'm going to change my door way over to here. And then I have that little staircase in there also that I need to move. Oops. the staircase I can pop in right there. Kind of want to do it where a square is so it, it makes sense. And so players can get through it easily. And this I'm just going to hold down shift and get it into just the right spot. Holding down control I can 
angle it slightly. That's good enough. I can always change the angle more precisely in the config. And then I just want to look at my walls. So this, I want to be just regular wall. A DF Architect lets you just select a wall and then hold down Control and, and press any of these buttons and it'll automatically change that wall type. In this case, I want this to be a door. Since it's coming at an angle, I recommend using wider doors. They're easier to, to navigate for players. So now I've got an egress into my tower and we'll worry about how I go up here in just a second. I also need to worry about the egress over here. In this case, I'm going to go to my background tiles. I'm going to grab this little staircase and I'm going to move it over to right about here. Notice I'm still on a, on a square. I'm going to move my door over. And, and then I'm going to make sure that my door works. I draw some of these extra walls here so that you've got some flexibility to just change things quickly, but you guys can let me know if the system's working well for you or not. There, now I have a nice little entrance into this, this one as well. And this one here, I just need to like fully rotate it. I want this to be over in the corner. So I'm going to try to rotate this. Here we go. It's got a little lamp. I need to adjust where that goes. In fact, I might just delete it. Remember, there's a light that goes with it, though. I just might move the light out here. Maybe there's a reason the light kind of outside. And I may need to adjust this. I want that to be right on a square there. And I'll do the same with the staircase for it. Okay, that looks good. This one's already done. This would be the egress into this tower. This would just be solid wall behind there. That's why I'm not going to change that. Okay, so now let's go up to our second floor. Make some of our adjustments. This one will work. Once I walk in, I can go up this staircase. It'll lead me to here, which leads me up to there. Uh, the problem actually with this setup is that I want to be able to access my walls. So I am going to move this. Move it over to about there. I'll move my staircase with it. I just kind of set them right there in the middle typically. Go up to this floor. Move that staircase where it goes. This one I will put here, and then I'm going to add some doors. So if I go up from here, I go into my portals at 150 and I grab some doors. I'm going to check. So this is a Z index of 10. My wall is at six. So I like my doors to sit right above my wall. So I'm going to set this to seven. And I'm also going to set its mode to uh, be foundry default always visible. And I'll bet because I pasted that levels, yeah, levels changed it. So no, what's visible. You can make it not do that by going into your levels thing and clicking this on. So I'm going to use this more. I'm going to, I'm going to leave that on. This basically keeps, prevents levels from forcing um, an inclusion mode on you. You guys may be wondering why I have doors on half squares. Uh, it's for dimensions and for playability and so that you can actually like kind of walk into a window and sort of be in the window and shoot out type of thing and still kind of be visible. It's, uh, you know, I modeled this after, um, you know, some of the Dwarven Forge stuff. 
as far as I think they've probably figured out some things with modularity. So that's why I chose to do that. You guys can let me know if um, with play testing, how that works out. But now I've just created two egress points. In this case, I'm at, um, you know, I'm at the, the next level here. So we'll talk about how to do the walls because, um, oh yeah, that's another thing I, I probably should have done. This wall can't be, since I'm not going up a level here, this walls actually need to go over here. Alternatively, I could get rid of the wall here and put one in. Actually, why don't I do that? I won't make any changes at all on this level. I'll just show you how this would work. This is essentially no wall here anymore or no, no egress at all. Just to simplify my walls while I'm here, I'll just do this. So I'm on the second floor. There's a, a, wall, a door here to leave, but I'm not going to have the door to go that way until I get up to the next floor. Okay, so now we're at the next floor. We need to check our staircases. So I need to have a staircase going down here, which is right. And I might make this a ladder actually. Let's see what I've got above me. Yeah, I'm gonna make this a ladder. So instead of a staircase, we're gonna have a ladder going up. And we're gonna put that ladder over in this corner to kind of get it out of the way. And we're gonna make sure that we move its ladder tile. Okay. Now, instead of an arrow slit on this side, we're going to have a doorway. So I'm going to double click open my arrow slit. I'm going to grab, um, actually, let's say it's a metal door. And then we're going to, have to change our walls. So I have this set up to be an arrow slit wall. We're going to change that now. This one, hold down control and turn it into a door. Okay, so now what happens is once you get to the third level or second floor, if you're in Europe, uh, for this arrow tower, you come up the staircase and then you can go through this door and onto the ramparts, which are now 20 feet high instead of uh, 10 feet, which is the level lower. But also from here, you can look out and shoot out of the, uh, out of the arrow slits. You can also go up then to the next level, which is the bell tower. And if I grab this, and now I want to make this a trapdoor down. Essentially, that's just a closed trapdoor now that I can. Oops, grab my window by accident. I can put that right here. Hold down shift if you can't get it in the exact right spot. And if you guys remember, um, this this is also a clock tower. I actually don't want this to be a clock, so I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to change this back to a window. And I'm just going to check my walls. Yep, that's a window. So I've got windows on all four sides, and I've got the bell itself. If you guys remember from uh, my release video, this bell is set up with active tiles so that when you click it, with the token, it makes a gong sound every time they click the bell. And of course, there's no egress out of here because we're now on the third or, or fourth floor, depending on where you're from. And now I can't get onto these ramparts. I can only look out and shoot out of the windows. Now remember, these are windows, so now players, uh, NPCs can look in, for example. Or you can look in if you're trying to take this over. Okay, let's go look at our next tower. Um, I come in here and then I'm going to go up a staircase. So let's see if our staircases are in the right spot. I'll put that right about there. Yep, that's the right spot. And then we'll have another one going up. course at this level I need egress points so I'm going to add some doors okay. 
It should fit perfectly right on there. Just check that you've got the inclusion modes set properly. So none and none. And this should work over here. I might set it at a little bit of an angle. None and none. Let's check our doors. We're going to want to make this a door. So hold down control. If you have DF architect, this one we're going to have to change a little bit. Recommend just a slightly bigger door here, but this should work just fine for players. That'll get them onto this wall. We'll get them onto this uh, castle entrance here, which we'll address here in a second. Okay, there's our staircase up, which leads to here. And then uh, from this level, there's there's nothing, it's, it's closed off. There's just another staircase leading up. And that leads us to this floor, which we can then exit through these doors. Let's actually make sure these are doors. These might, oh, these are, these are metal doors. I say um, these are generally see-through, but you have to open them. So it's, it is a closed door. It's just a see-through door. That gets you onto these ramparts. There's a couple of lamps already lit out there and you can fight there or you can continue up to the fourth floor. This floor is an arrow tower that you can shoot out of. And I believe there's also another level above this. Yep, and there's a uh, there's a roof to that tower. Okay, so this tower looks pretty good for now. Okay, so let's check this tower out now. I'm going to go to the ground floor. I've got my egress point. I've got a staircase there. So let's see what happens on the second level. Uh, second level now, I pop out of this uh, this trap door, and now I'm on these this sort of crenelled landing here. And obviously I want that then to lead me to uh, be able to walk across here. So let's check out how we want to do this. I think what I actually want to do is let's, uh, let's grab these tile. Let's get our tile path sort of get us in the right spot. And uh, let's, let's go to the ramparts again. And let's see how this one fits. So let's do 150. I don't really like that. Let's try, actually, let's just try a staircase. I, what I'm trying to do is just cover up that one uh, bit of crenellation. And I think this works for me now. I've got a staircase going up. I just want to make sure this is set at the right sort of occlusion. First of all, just from a Z-order perspective, I like it not to be too far away from this one. So this one's set at 55, so let's set this one at 56. And this is set to hide and fade. Um, since it's open to the, air, the open air, the sun shines down on it. I'm going to make this more like a roof. And I'm going to show even when it's below. I'm going to show through the fog and I'll fade it and let's see if that ultimately we'll, we'll play test this or we'll test this with the character and see how it does. Okay, so now I'm up to this level. Now I can go in through this door and keep going up. Go up again. Nothing, no, no portals on this level. And then when I get to the top, I've now got windows that I can uh, shoot from and this still shows that I'm going up even further. In this case, I I need something at the top of this. So uh, if I wanted to go up further and actually wanted to fight from here, I would need a, a portal. So let's grab, oops, not a portal. In this case, we need a stair, which is technically one of these guys. Make sure it's right in the square there. This is set as a roof. Let's see if we want that now. Okay, so this is set at 40 and infinity, and this is set at 40 and infinity. 
Another thing that you can do here is you can say if this ever disappears, notice uh, it wants the trapdoor to disappear already too. Show fade. We want this to disappear as well. So if that if the tile that it's sitting on ever disappears, we want this one to disappear. And we'll try that and we'll play test that in a second. We do need uh, an egress on that side, so let's do the same thing here. Covers our wall just a little bit. Good enough for me. We'll need to change our walls here, of course. Because we're going to need to be able to access that. Notice I put my quick edit mode on all of my rows here. This is another Monk um, module that lets you see all of these together. But no matter where I'm at, I just use it so often that I just set quick edit mode to, to do that. So we want this to be this. No, yeah. Um, levels will, I wish there was a button to make it stop doing this also, but we want that to be I don't know, 14 or 16. This is a six feet high. That seems implausible for a wall. So I'm going to set all of these to 14 here. Actually, I'm going to change my walls first. And then I'll set them so that they're just four feet high. Uh, you'll notice these are set to not restrict sound. I don't know why Foundry defaults to that, um, to where sound is restricted, but it's just generally a bad idea if you want to have like ambient noises and things like that. I'll set those back to 14. Okay, so now my walls are 14 high on this level, and I've resolved my egress to my walls here, so it should be good. Okay, again, these walls are going to go up, and so there's not going to be any egress to this floor from the from the first floor. So here's how I get into the tower. I go up. Uh, once I'm up, I'm on this level. There should be no egress here, which there's not. So I up, go up again to this level. I'm going to correct the rotation here. And now I want to create egress at this level because this will be going off to both walls. This, this segment of wall is 20 feet high. So I'll go to my portals and I will drag in some doors. Make sure I get my Z order right so those are 76, so I want these portals to be 77, just so they don't stick up too high from anything else. And I want these to be none and none, always visible. And I'm going to duplicate that. Oops. I'm going to rotate that just slightly. Ooh, looks good. None and none. Let's re engage this. I want Ripper to make that default so I can I can make it stop doing that forever, which he might do after he sees this video. Um, all right. Now I just need to get my doors in the right spot and I'm in a good place. Make that a door. Let's go ahead and connect those up there. All right, now I have access to these walls, which we will resolve here in a moment. At my next level up, one thing I like about rotating towers is you get them to be also, get the, the arrow slits to be in sort of interesting positions. So instead of being on the edges, they're now in the corners and you can shoot out and you can even look at uh, shoot into the courtyard as well uh, but that should be good hey, if you ever notice that your flag isn't flying 
uh, come in here, uh, just open your flag up and set its animation to autoplay. Um, for some reason, I don't know if it's a token attacher thing, I don't know what causes it, but it will it will stop playing these. So if you, you just notice that you've got arrow uh, flags that can be waving and they're not, just set them to autoplay. And, uh, and by the way, maybe I want, I'll get rid of my levels UI here just so you can see all of these. Maybe I want a different color here. Maybe this castle is going to be sort of a blue, be even a brighter blue. I'm going to grab that blue hex code. And I'm going to give that to my two towers. And maybe instead of uh, yellow, I want something else. So I'm going to probably not blue. It doesn't really stand out. There's a, there's a green flag. Okay. Okay, so let's get to setting up our walls here. So on our ground floor, we're going to have certain walls that go up 10 feet. So I'm just going to draw a wall from one end to the other. There is no egress here. This is just solid wall on this level. I'm going to do the same here. Of course, you could uh, introduce a secret passage. You could introduce a drain through a wall. There's a lot of stuff that you could do here. Let's clean that up a bit. This wall is going to be 20 feet. What I'm going to do is just draw a 10 foot wall and I'll draw the next length up above it. Okay, now let's go to this floor. Okay, so this one is gonna be another length of 20 feet. Cause again, this is just solid wall between these two towers. There is no, there is no egress here. Okay, and this one is going to have a 20 foot length uh, only to about here. I'll show you how I resolve this here in a second. And now I'm going to have to fight levels a little bit here. But I'm going to draw another segment here. This wall is going to be no sight restriction, no sound restriction. And I only want it to go up four feet, so 10 to 14. I'm going to clone that wall. But of course, because levels takes over, I need to change that back to 14. And then I'm going to draw the same wall these areas here. If I hold down shift, I can select both of them. Change them to 14. Grab your select tool and you, you get more than halfway on any line. You can grab them all at once. Make sure they're not restricting sound still. We'll resolve that gatehouse here in just a second. Okay, that gives me all my basically 10 foot walls. Now I need to go up the next floor. And I need to do the same here. See if my clone still works. Okay. 
That seems right. This snap to grid is going to be a little bit off since since I rotated my tower off of the grid. Select both of those. Everything else looks good. And I need to do the same thing here. Of course, I need a way to get up. I'm going to go back down to this floor. And I'm going to um, actually do a couple of things here. So on this level, I want maybe some terrain walls. Let's see how this looks. And I don't want these to block movement. This one I want, I want to block movement. This one I don't. No sound restriction and movement would be none. This one I want no sound restriction. But basically I'm going to put a teleporter here or a stair here, if you will. We can draw that a little bit more precisely. Okay, so now a player will be running along this wall. They'll hit this and they'll bounce up to the next level. Let's see how it looks from a player's perspective. All right, I got them on the 10 foot side. They're running up here and they can't quite see above. They jump up. Yeah, you know what? I, I don't think I like that. Let's just get rid of these, get rid of this one. And then this one I will turn into um, just a regular invisible wall. The reason I want that is so that if a, if a player drops down the staircase, they can't run back into the solid wall. So here I'm at 20 feet now, and now I can access this tower. And when I run out, I'm back to 10 feet. And again, I can't, I'm pressing up and I can't go back into the solid wall. Okay, that looks good. Another thing you can do if you like it, I set, you notice I set all these walls as background tiles. That these, these tiles here, you can give them a drop shadow. So here I have a drop shadow tall. It's in my compendium if you guys are looking for it. Oops. And you can see it's just, it's an effective way of making um, these stand up off of the ground. You do need token magic effects for it to work. But you can see it's a pretty nice effect. Now I can, I can really tell that these walls are, are standing up off the ground. Okay, so we've solved all of our things. Let's just look at what our scene looks like now. Here's what we've built. You can see the 20-foot wall in the back, the 10-foot walls on these sides. You can see that sort of the entrance there, which we'll do some more stuff here in a second. But this is a really tactically interesting map that we can do some really cool stuff with. Okay, so let's focus on our sort of our main area here. First of all, one thing that I want to do, whoops, it's not the one I wanted to grab. Oh, I'm not at the right floor. That's my problem. Um, I want to turn this into a or tile. These are set at 100, so 
I'm going to set this to 101. I did that just so I could see the floor when, um, when I'm just looking at the regular scene. I'll just show you this while I'm here. Uh, we're going to get rid of this. And we're going to put a new one in its place. We're going to go to entrances and we're going to grab this stair. We're going to turn this into a floor tile, background tile. And we're going to delete this one. Whoops. And we're going to put this one in its place. set to 25. I want this to be just above that one. 26. Now it's under the wall, but it's above this sort of thing here. That's just another staircase tile that you guys can play around with. Eventually I'll build some staircases that let you go directly up to the walls from, from the sides. Okay, so now I need something on the top of this. I think what I'd like to do is um, just put a, a crenel top there. If I type in crenel, I, I come up with my tops and this is a five by five square. So I'm just gonna drop this. Let me just make sure my equals mode is off. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna turn off quick edit mode too. That can do weird things while you're dropping prefabs. Let's grab the circle one. Maybe wondering where it is. It's actually a roof. It's configured as a roof. So let's turn on quick edit mode and see if we can change this around a bit. So I wanted to go from 10 to infinity. Show through the fog. It's technically a roof, so I want it to go to infinity. And I'm going to change it. I don't want that access point there. So I've got one that's got no door. Let's see how we do here. You'll also notice that this, this does already have the token magic effects uh, drop filter applied to it. Now what I need to do is figure out how I want the egress to work. And I might use my staircases again. It's 102. So if we set the staircase to 103, make sure it shows through the fog. It's technically a roof, so we'll set it to infinity. Okay. This one's sort of a problem. But I think I'm good with that as far as a way up there. And I'll create some other transition pieces here in the future. Uh, maybe even just a shorter wall piece that can connect these up. If I set this up a little bit higher, that might resolve the problem. 
There, that makes it look like a little bit better transition. Now I'm uh, on the top, this top piece here. Uh, maybe I want some more things uh, going on. So, um, you know, I've got these things in here called decor items. And maybe I want some uh, murder holes. So I'll drop these murder holes in. Of course, I have to make sure they're in C order. So I'm going to set them up at 103. Um, I want them to, yeah, I guess I'm fine with them fading. Let's see how this looks. And then I, maybe I want this to do the same thing. Let's set that to infinity. Okay. Put our test player at the ground level and let's take a little walk through. So I can't go anywhere else but through here. As I approach this tower, I can open that up. If you notice something weird happens, oh, you know what? I, uh, <laughs> this is why you play test these. You notice I jumped up 10 feet there's still a, uh, a teleporter here. So if I go down to my ground floor, sometimes you might have to toggle between your levels. You notice I've got a teleporter here. If I turn on quick edit mode, I can move that. Okay. So now I'm in my tower. There's nothing else to do but go up the staircase. And now I'm at the point where I can get onto my walls. That's working. Here's my access to my roof. You notice what I didn't do is change my walls on this level. Better be careful with that. I don't want to change all of my walls the wrong way. I just want everything in here to be 14 feet. Now, one thing I wanted to show you guys that you might find interesting is, uh, you know, let's say, let's say this was here instead. And let's go to our decor items. And, you know, let's say that this gate was operated by this device here. Let's set this to 103. And, you know, I'm going to do something else here, too. I'm going to say this whole thing, I'm going to define this as um, uh, 
uh, gatehouse123 is its code. Every time it disappears, everything above it will disappear. I'm going to apply that same code to all these guys. So I want this to show through the fog, fade, but it's going to disappear when its partner down below does. And I'm even uh, show one below. Do the same thing for this one. Show through the fog, fade, disappear when that one does. Show one below. And we're going to do the same for this. If the sunlight can hit it, I'm going to call it infinity. Show even one below. Show through the fog. The other thing I might want to do is just say don't hide this in the fog ever. It can be helpful. Let's see how let's see, let's see how this one works. Uh, that's giving me an error, so let me go back into it. Show fade. Okay, so you see it's like locking me out. This means that I've got to like refresh my my scene. Okay, let's try this again. Gauge my levels UI. Okay. That should work. Now let's activate this. Say anyone who clicks it we're gonna alter, we're gonna try to alter the door state. So we're gonna select an entity. In this case, it's gonna be this door. And uh, we want to say I'm going to change the door state here. I'm going to select my door, which is going to be on this lower level. And I'm going to set it to toggle. So now what happens if I have a player come over here and then click this, I just shut that door. If I go down to this level, you see that door is now shut. And if I click it again, it now opened that door. That's an easy way to do this. You as a GM can lock this door and then have your players come and be able to open and close it once they get to this level. So uh, think about how you might use that in gameplay, um, but that's super fun thing and pretty interesting. Okay, so keep keep moving through our map. I'm now at the roof. That works. And my archer's post essentially, which is just windows. Nothing on this level. And now I'm back to level one of this sort of secondary tower. If I want to get down to the lower tower, I can walk down here and I'm in a lower tower. So this is all working. And my wall access works as well. Jumps me up to 20 feet. That gets me into this tower. 
Now I'm in my archer's post. I can see out these windows if I hit, uh, well, you don't have to, if you hit like diagonal, you can get into the window and really get a good uh, field of view. Um, let's go down to this level. Get an extra guy there. Probably need to rename my levels here too. Those didn't quite work. My wall access works here. You just want to try, you know, all of your levels in general. Okay, now I'm at the bottom floor. I don't know what just got confused there. Something getting my, my player stuck. I don't know what it was. Okay, now I'm at my 20 foot wall. Now I'm going into my clock tower. Okay, that's how I get into my clock tower from down below. But I'm missing a staircase here. So let's go to our second floor and it looks like my staircase just wasn't dragged over. Turn on quick edit mode, drag my staircase over, and let's keep testing. It takes me up. Okay, that's how that was supposed to work originally. It can shoot out all of my arrows here, my arrow slits. If I go up to the top, I can bang on my bell, shoot out my windows. Okay, that's working good. Remember, for gameplay, you can always disable um, certain certain egress points and certain staircases if you don't want players accessing those yet. Close my gate. My UI there is, seems to be confusing things. One thing I noticed. I want these to be closer to this this wall. So that's 36. So I want these to be at 37. You notice if they're not close to the wall, they can stick up above roofs. Not that your players would see that, but it bothers me. So I change them. Okay, now what I think would be cool is some adding some ballista. So I'm going to open up Molinet and see where my players came. Okay, my players on the third floor here. I'm going to open up Molinet tile picker and I don't have forgotten adventures because they're not in Molinet. So it's a little bit harder to add them. Uh, I don't have them in this world. So I'm going to go to Tom Cartos and Let's see what kind of assets he's got for me to play with. So he's got a really cool cannon. Uh, let's see if what it looks like at 150 DPI. That's probably bigger than I want. Let's set it to uh, 200. It's got some great arcane cannons here if you want to make all of a sudden a, uh, you know, something that was it as a magical encounter uh, 
let's just copy this cannon. We'll set it at uh, 200 because I just want it to be above other things. In fact, I'll even set it at 300. And we want this to um, show through the fog. Fade. It's going to, the sunlight can hit it, so we'll call it a roof. And show it one below. Now we might have to adjust this a little bit. Um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make sure that my equal sign is turned on. I'm going to grab my cannon. I might place another one over here. I think. I think these are the same level. Maybe they're not actually. Yeah, that's actually level 10. So let's take our cannon and put it level 10. Put that there. And maybe up on the top here, we're going to put a ballista. Let's see what Tom's got for ballistas. These are great. Recurve ballista, that sounds amazing. We'll put that up here. I may want to play with some occlusion IDs here in a second because I'll probably see this ballista materialize when I don't want it to. for me. Let's find our guy. So here you can go and fire a cannon off. You can um, change it around. You can make it a prefab and, and your players can actually then like control it and stuff, which might be kind of cool. See how it's it's still visible there? The way you can do that is or fix that if that's something you want to fix. You can uh, give this a value, call it uh, tower two, one, two, three, just to make sure it's unique. Update that tile. Oh, actually, probably wouldn't use this one. Oh, we can do all of them actually. We already had that assigned. Let's just use that one. We'll call this same thing. Let's find our guy again. So now it's disappeared. We want to go up and fire our ballista, get up to this level, and now we can see it. So we've essentially built a castle here just to remind you what it looks like. It's essentially this now. And if we wanted to add more embellishments, you know, you can do things like um, uh, going into maps, wilderness, into your terrains and under the grass and dirt. I'll have more of these for other other ones later, but you've got a bunch of different terrain types that you can play with here. So, you know, let's say that, uh, let's see, let's say that I wanted this to be sitting on a large sort of mesa. All right, there's our mesa. We've got internet issues here. 
put it underneath everything. And then let's increase its size a bit. I'm using the quick scaler, I'm just using the right bracket key to increase its size. And I want to find a spot that looks like it's roughly about the right the middle. There you go. I could further add more uh, tactical walls and things. Um, but this is a pretty cool, pretty effective you know, tower type scene. And you, of course, you can add anything in the background or other tiles that you want because you want to put this same, um, you know, the same castle somewhere else. But hopefully this helps you guys understand how to use the system. Let me know in the comments if you have questions on how I did anything and if you have any other ideas for improving the system. Uh, thanks so much and have fun uh, building your castles.